Everybody ready? Where's Manny? All right, we're going to start with a prayer first. Now we'll start with the, and then go with the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody can please stand and take your hands on. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. You are our healer and our provider, Lord. Lord, we ask that you come into this place, God. Anoint this meeting, God. Be with us, God. Help us, give us wisdom, and we give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Just for, um, just for the sake of uh, getting a little bit of inventory in here, how many people out here are from St. Charles County? Raise your hand, please. All right, and so how many of you folks come out here to talk a little bit about the growth issue? Want to raise your hands about the growth in St. Charles County? Okay, so that's uh, what what we what had happened in the, in the last, we set this meeting up about uh, four or five weeks ago. And when we were talking, there me, Richard, and Tricia. There are a lot of things that we didn't we didn't know um, when we set this meeting up. Um, we had uh, growth. We had actually it was uh, the water issue. It was uh, the health issue, and it was uh, the growth issue. Um, they go hand in hand, but the first two are much more, um, I guess, uh, important and um, somewhat emotional. So um, we did have a. Um, presentation for growth for like 15 minutes and then we're going to lead into the more heavy topic um, so uh, if you guys want us to talk briefly about growth um, uh, what do you guys do you, this is there any opinion out there you guys want to touch on that for 15 or 20 minutes or 15 minutes um, do you guys want to talk about that or is there a lot of people here on the other issue uh, what's that so, who's here to talk about the legislation and the contamination issues? Okay. So, if we have time to talk about the growth afterwards, I guess we'll do that. Um, so, because it kind of, like I said, in the last couple weeks, this topic got a lot more emotional and a lot more dramatic with the information that Trisha found out. So. Um, me and Richard was going to talk a lot about the growth in this area, about the double D thing, and about some of the other issues. But this thing has uh, taken on a whole new life, this other topic, the water issue, which you're going to find out a lot of um, uh, things that are going to be actually shocking. Um, so what I will do here is most of you guys know who I'm about ready to introduce. And let me get her... Um, her uh, Just tell them how we... Well, okay, so um, go to this, let's see, let me show you this slide. I, I'm going to go through these things real quick. Um, these are some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, okay, so this here is a letter about, i say, three months ago. Actually, in 2019, I wrote this same letter. And then about three months ago, I wrote a letter to the uh, county executive, all the state legislators in the county and the senators, and DNR, and uh, whoever else is on, on there. And I asked this question why there's so many people dying on Highway F, because I had no idea. It seems like there are a lot of people in, in our county, in Southwest St. Charles County, that are dying from uh, strange cancers, and um, I didn't know anything about it. And so I asked this question, and um, I got no response except from DN, is that DNR? That's DNR, right? Right, Trish? And, and, and they said, if you read the high, I know you can't read that because it's, I, I didn't know the setup of this room, but they go on to talk about um, everything's fine, there's no issues, no need to further investigate, all this other stuff. And I sent, and then Trish called me after I sent out the letter, and she said, um, well, I thought, I, I thought you were part of this. I go, I don't even know what you're talking about. She says, well, I thought you were part of this cover up, so to speak. And I said, Trish, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've been a, I'm, embar I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know, but I've been a county commissioner, county council in this district for 22 years, and they've done a real good job of covering up the problems we have with this water and this contamination. There's no question about it. And I represent this area where well, well in spring is. And they say, everything's fine. Well, not everything is fine. And so um, I'm going to lead off with Trish. She's been a major advocate for this, and Richard. 
they called me to have breakfast with them. In a lot of instances, Trisha has been labeled as someone who was off a rocker. She was, didn't know what the hell she was talking about and all this other stuff. And so she, her and the group that's going to come up here did a deep dive. And you guys will be shocked at some of the information they came up with. Now, if we got time, we, we, like I said, things have changed and evolved to this, to this as a major topic. We will talk about growth at the end of the meeting. And uh, we do have the police chief here. We have a planning zoning commissioner here. And we have other, we have state senators over here. We have Jay Ashcross over here. And so they will be, everyone in this room will be uh, able to answer questions to the state officials, to the local officials, to our police chief. And so they will be available for questions and comments. So if we get to that point, I'm not saying we'll get to that point, Mason, maybe we'll just stick with her point. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Trisha Burner. you guys being here but I'm also really disappointed you have to be here today because for the first time some of you guys in the room might be finding out that some really important information has been withheld from you and for that I'm sorry and we have people from North County that are here and one of my missions when I went to the Capitol was to make sure that we locked arms it did not matter what side of the river you were on it didn't matter what side of the aisle you were on. We were all in this together, and that has been the game changer. Um, and can I please have you guys stand up who've worked on this, including Mark? When I found out my kid had cancer, they took me in back in 2017. So, I'm shoot from the hip here. Um, so North County is here because they've been doing this for a while. And as I talked to the news, and even as Senator Hawley called, he said if it wasn't for you, I would have no idea that Weldon was even a problem. And I think that's really what, what Representative West and what Councilman Brazel is saying as well. So I'm just going to get into some visual aids here for you, because I think as long as I can that changed, but that didn't change. Do we have IT people? Okay. <laughs> um, maybe you can just hang. Um, I just want to skip past there. That would show up. It's always a glitch. The screen that I'm trying to show really is just a, a message. Because as a lot of people here, these strong voices here, are moms, right? Don't mess with their kids. Don't mess with the people they love. Don't mess with their siblings. Don't mess with their friends. And as we would try to get assistance, I swear to you, people would look me in the eye and say, huh, a thousand feet from a high school, they put an atomic bomb plant. Well, can you give us a scientific study to prove to us that you were injured? And that is the thing that mattered to me the most when the senator showed up at that rock pile. He said, you've got to be kidding me. You shouldn't have to prove to the federal government that the atomic bomb kills people. Thank God how many people are like, finally, like seriously. And you guys kind of get the agenda. Um, and that's what I'm saying. We have said that so many times. Why are you trying to make a mom prove the atomic bomb kills people? Here's why this is such a secret issue. Do you know I've even been sunshine one time and I said, I don't even know how to help you. I'm still scrambling to try to find the documents. This is why. Because in trying to save our country, you guys may have seen Oppenheimer. It was very um, secret. Matter of fact, if they talked about what they were doing, even out here in Weldon, they were facing 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine for espionage. This I'm going to have to read to you guys because I think it also really shows the secrecy. I don't even have to run down here. So I found this document, and this, people are going to be seeing this for the first time. I found this document um, because it was just declassified. And by just, I don't, I don't know when. But the point was, it was declassified because they wanted to keep it secret. And what they did is they tested on the workers. And they did a study called The Changes in the Blood of Humans Chronically Exposed to Low-Level Gamma Radiation. How many people have been told, oh, hey, 
um, uranium that's naturally occurring. Oh, hey, it's low level. Well, what they found in this study was that the tolerance level for low level radiation, which had been accepted by the AEC, which was the DOE back then, that they were way too high on that. So what did they do? Did they alert people? No. They said, you cannot share this with anyone. They said that we can see a possibility of a shattering effect on the morale of the employee if they become aware that there was a substantial reason to question the standards of safety for which they were working. Oh, it gets better. In the hands of labor unions, the results of this study would add substance to demands for extra hazardous pay. And then the final line when they said, yeah, we really shouldn't let anyone know, they said we can also see that this study will be a powerful weapon in the hands of a plaintiff's attorney. Wow. How does that sit with you? Wow. Workers, though, workers, thank goodness, they did get legislation passed in 2000. There was a lot of quoting this kind of stuff. There's not that many sites in Missouri, but since 2000, we paid out almost $300 million. You guys, that is a moment of guilt and admission that this kills people for every dollar you see there. Weldon alone, I believe, is up to $50 million. So when people go, hey, that's just a pile of, of clean dirt, and what we heard, scrap metal, uh, <laughs> Vaseline. Um, Will Sharp was with me doing a tour when they told us um, that it was a, a pile of Vaseline. Well, that pile of Vaseline's paid out $50 million to others, and I can guarantee that's not a billion-dollar cleanup of filter. So people, I'm just doing this really brief because how did we get here, right? So the birthplace of the atomic bomb happened with ether extraction, right? And it happened right in St. Louis City. One of the most disgusting documents I found was they actually joked about it and they said, well, you know, if Bob's right, um, well, we might kill people. And if Washington's right, maybe we won't kill people. And they said, well, who cares? Because either way, we might kill people. My mother lived a few blocks from that as a child. Then once they realized they outlived their space in St. Louis City and contaminated the ever-living makeup board, um, they then took and they dumped it all at the airport. I heard once that they used all of the barrels. They ran out of barrels. And I thought, God, how does the company run out of barrels? I saw this and I thought, oh my God, they might have ran out of barrels in the friggin' country. So this here, that's just open waste that was blowing. And I think you guys know where it went. Right there. And the reason why we have legislation pending is because these ladies right here sent a document to our senator that said they knew since 1949 that that was going to kill people. They actually went and looked at those barrels. Oh, that's Laddie. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. They went and looked at those barrels. And they said, if we clean this up, we'll kill people, or kill our workers. Go ahead and let it leak into the creek. And then they went back and they tested the creek in the 70s, probably when that little fellow was playing in that creek. How many people lived there? So, so did I, so did my husband. We lived in the area. Um, I was so disappointed we didn't back to the creek like so many of my friends. And yes, some of my friends I went to grade school with have passed. We know that story now. This is Laddie. That's the same pile that kills people. Now this story is frustrating. Because these two women, how many people remember the crazy lady saying that there was a landfill on fire with an atomic bomb in it? What a bunch of nuts. Thank God for those crazy people. Because let me tell you what happened in I cannot believe I actually walked up on this. But this is the area that they would complain about. And I'm going to talk about this meeting, okay? I'm going to talk about the federal government. It was the last week of session, and I believe that the federal government was playing games. Um, the EPA found out what I was doing. They said Trish Burns is not allowed to come to a meeting, so I emailed them back and said, hey, I'm just wondering where my press conference um, should set up, and can I use your equipment? They, honestly, 
Yeah, I, I'm going to the house as a freshman going to, I'm in an actual fight with the EPA. Um, so what they did, it was a hilarious move, they set up an Eventbrite account. And then you had to get, they moved the date, and then to go to their meeting, their public meeting, you had to give your name, your contact information, your affiliation, and what your question was in order to get a ticket. How many people got to see that? Because that kind of went viral. Went straight to the radio, because you know we weren't having any of that county stuff. <laughs> then they called, not even realizing that I'm talking to all sides at DC, and we're laughing our ever-living butts out by them. So they finally had the meeting the last week of session. That was the only elected official in the room, and I believe that was intentional. That is a very difficult time for people to leave the Capitol. I walked into the meeting, and I found a EPA folks, just like you saw they setting up. I saw them in there, and maybe he just didn't know, so I'll give him some love later, but I still have to show what had happened, right? There he was clutching his pearl. I'm so sorry. I have so much empathy for the people of St. Louis, but this area is not causing any danger to anyone, and it hasn't left the site. I walked straight up to those cameras, and I was like, are you kidding me right now? We are at this meeting to show these people that it's much worse than we thought, and it left the site. So when people sit there and they say, well, if there was a problem, the government would tell us. I finally was like, oh, I'm the government, dude. There's seriously a problem. <laughs> and there's also a problem with my slides. <laughs> so here's Weldon Spring. Now, this is before clean water, right? Someone in this room, this is the room that would know when the Clean Water Act came out, but I guarantee it wasn't 1956. All of this here was a thousand feet from an operating high school. And I have to say that again because nobody ever understands what I'm saying. The federal government put an atomic bomb plant a thousand feet from an operating high school. And before my time, I didn't realize this, also not too far from an elementary school. They also had the quarry. Because before it became a bomb plant, it was a TNT plant. All kinds of chemicals that are a disaster there. I don't know if anybody recognizes that, but I swam in that. So did a lot of people I know. Didn't look like that. I don't know when that was. But that shows all the barrels. Because a lot of the stuff that was in there it came from the airport and it came from when they took down the St. Louis City plant. There was a lot of stuff in that. But I got some bad news. Here's how, here's how, here's the cleanup site. Do you think I have every reason to scream out loud you put a bomb plant next to a high school? Yeah. Of course I do. It's ridiculous that we have to wait this long to get help. Now, there's gonna be other people in the room that says, oh, thank goodness I didn't go to the high school. I live out in Wentzville, I'm pretty far away. Well, Wentzville, guess what? Here's that quarry I just showed you. And here's your drinking wells. Those are not private wells, that's the county wells for PWSD2. Now, I still live in Wentzville, I didn't go run out the door, and it's really hard to try to make awareness not become hysteria. I'm not hysterical about that yet, I'm watching it but I am getting a little more nervous, and I'm really wanting them to come and, and talk about this. I called DNR, who's been really, really helpful, and we'll get into like the state agency probably as I speak. But I went to a meeting to learn more about that bomb worker stuff, because I thought, well, it's the same stuff, I can learn more. And during that meeting, I could not believe it, you probably can't see it here, but there's a site for the Department of Labor. Department of Labor, of all places, a federal agency, has been keeping track of the chemicals on that chemical plant. We are up to 573 toxins. DNR is still working off the 1980s document. That troubles me. Doesn't mean there's necessarily a problem, but I want some immediate answers. The other thing I have a problem with is that landfill is one of the most dangerous landfills in the country. And that quarry was just empty. That is too close to our water. As you can see from some of these documents and the way they treat our region, I have so many documents that say, oh, you know what, just go take that out and weld it and burn it. I feel, as a St. Charles County resident, I can't trust 
the water here. This is fine, but if we need to do another well, we don't know if we can dump them into a clean bit of earth. We really, I'm not an expert, but as a resident, I really want DOE to come down here. I think they owe us a water treatment plan. Yeah. How many people agree with that? <laughs> I want to talk about the madness. Because they did clean up that site, as you guys know. And one of the things that infuriates me the most, when I started looking into this about 2017, getting really loud in 2018, I called the attorneys who, who, who they, there were so many different lawsuits, and I called Louise Rizal, and she got $73 million, something like that, for the people, our sister plant in Fernando, Ohio. And the DOE went to the people in front of those cameras and said, you know, we really were inept, we didn't understand the environment, we really didn't take care of things, we're really sorry, we hope this will relieve their stress. They weren't even injured at the time, they were stressed. And then their people said, well, we don't have wells. People have wells in this area to this very day. Private drinking wells, but they didn't there and they got paid. And when I called her, she said, I'm old and all of my experts are not around anymore. Where, where were you guys? I was like, man, that's a really good question. Well, guess what? This document, which I have on here, it's a PR document. So while they were admitting that they didn't want people to be stressed in Ohio, they hired PR professionals and the people of St. Charles County. How do I know that's true? Because one of my friends did one of the little stunts on there. She was invited to ride a bus to see the cleanup site. And they duct taped all the windows and the bus broke down, they brought another bus and they did, the, the ground is lava, they jumped from one bus to another. Because that's how we treated this, like it was a game. Look at this. That's somebody from the class of 91. That was teacher approved. That's how much we did not take this serious. Our cross country team wore that on their shirts. You might not be able to see this, all these little blocks. That was all the open houses. As long as you were on the safe side of that fence, you could watch the people in moon suits tear that down. The other thing I want to ask, where the hell are those water trucks? Why did they leave the kids there while they were demolishing those buildings? There's some there's dozens and dozens of buildings. Look at this. That was all happening. Is Tom Whalen in here tonight? He was going to try to make it. Do you want me to tell your story? I'll tell his story really quick. I'm here. Thank you. He told me a story. Was that your wife? <laughs> his wife was a soccer coach for the freshman girls team at home? She was just in gym class. Oh, okay, in gym class. And the girls knocked a soccer ball over the fence at Francis Howe. And they thought it was so charming. A guy in a moonstone kicked it back? That's what happened to my friends. Also happened to these workers. And they talked about the fence too, and they said they tore down those buildings on one side of the fence, but they had picnic tables where we ate lunch on the other. And then they said they would have to wear those Dosimity badges to see how, you know, baked they were getting doing this work. Thank God they did do this work, though. But if the badges were really bad, they'd tear those off, give them new ones, and then they would test the new one. This man says that his boss and him would have nosebleeds. And his boss would say, don't say anything about it because you lose your job. But his boss ended up dying of cancer. This, I am especially upset about. Because if anybody would have actually got off their ass and looked why these babies were dying, a lot of people wouldn't be dead today. And I gotta tell you, I have another gal that I'm gonna call her out here because she may not like to do this. They ran me out of this conversation in 2018 as well. They 100% did. In 2018, there was a two hour interview with me and another student. They were gonna do a whole Nightline Tech special locally. They called me up and they said, oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. Our newsroom just blew up. They're pulling all of our advertising if we run another story about you. 
So I'm looking at why, the, why they always talk about these seven dead babies, but when I looked through the file, Father Cleo says, why do you keep talking about seven? There was eight dead babies in our parish in one year. And then I saw one lady, and she's like, please just go look to see if it's a chemical plant. And they were, oh, we all talked to our experts, and our experts all fudged a bunch of numbers around, and you guys are completely nuts. It has nothing to do with this thing, come fast forward, ten years, they hit back, right? They paid $50 million for that stuff, so we know it's bad, right? But they told them they were crazy. I even found an email, and it said, oh, wow, they want to talk about dead babies again? Exclamation point. So... Before I show you the next thing, there was so much effort on this. A guy, a whistleblower, came to my press conference, and Senator Hawley came to the press conference, and he brought up photos, and I would always hear people talk about red water. And I found an article, the lady said, please just look in my backyard. I backed to Darden Creek, the creek is red, it's covered in oil, and they told her, we don't have red water in chemical plants. Oh, well, this room's the... This is him. <coughs> that was the site. Where's that site at, Treasure? That is the TNT side of the cleanup. At the same time, those families wanted to know why they had dead babies and red water behind those creeks. Please explain to me, because I am somebody, if you tell me there's a problem, I will get off my butt and go look. So will the fellows up here. So will everybody in this room. How did they not go look? Because that was in 1990, and it is 2023, people. This is what saved us, was the news. And I never seen anything like it. Dawn called and I cried at the end of the session because I said, oh my god, as a team we did everything we could. We had people from every level all the way up to the federal level. We were all pushing to get somebody to take action, for somebody to do what somebody should have done when I just saw that red water, right? And nothing happened. But Dawn goes, come over here because you're not going to know what's going to happen in the morning. Starting at 6 a.m., was about 24 news folks, four newsrooms, and every half hour to an hour, they started blowing up the DOE. And they started showing everything that I told you, they started sharing. And within hours, Senator Hawley said he was going to do legislation. Within two weeks on Thursday, he already passed it from the Senate. <laughs> But I want you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Mr. Sam Saffo come and talk about it because I think you should, they should talk about their legislation. But I know you guys are harmed and I know you're afraid and I know there's issues, right? And I got to tell you first off, I was talking to Dawn and how, how do you say this? There's a lot of things that maybe this will help with. Um, but I first need to start with what it is. It is not. It is not what anybody deserves. It is a far cry from what we deserve. If this was a private company, they would be sued out of ever living existence. Every person would get what they deserve. <laughs> but unfortunately, the only legislation that really exists is a 1990 law called RICA. Um, and it's much easier to do an amendment than it is to start from scratch. And so I know there's people here that don't see their illnesses and don't see their zip codes. And I know there's people here like me, when you read those zip codes, you start going, oh, that's my uncle, his two kids. That's the girl I went to grade school with. That's the gal that went to Howell. Oh my God, that zip code for the other kid in Howell may not be here. So, I know they're going to do everything they can. The senator called me personally on Friday, and he is 100% committed. we got to get him across the finish line, and it's going to take every one of you just 100% just knock off the, the side of the aisle on this issue. I don't care who they are. I don't care what side of the river. I don't care what side of the aisle. If you're going to help this community, I am going to lock arms with you, and I hope you guys agree, because we have got to get Congress to move. Trish, before you go, how many of your friends have, that you went to high school with have passed away? 
you're going to hear from people today, and I think them telling their story is more important than rattling off numbers. Thank you, Representative. Does this microphone work? Great. Hey, everybody. My name is Sam Saffa. I represent U.S. Senator Josh Hawley tonight. I serve as his Missouri Chief of Staff, and I looked it up on Google before I came. I grew up 4.9 miles from here at the intersection of D and Double D, so it's very personal to me as well. I want to thank Representative Burns, Representative West, Mr. Brassel for having us, Don and Karen from Just Moms STL. It's good to be with you. I want to, I'll be very brief tonight, but I want to just state the problem right up front here. For 50 years, the federal government has put in our water, in our soil, in our air, radioactive nuclear contamination. And then the federal government asked the people of St. Louis and St. Charles to bear the brunt of a nuclear program, but they never owned up to any of its effects on us. So let me provide you, as Representative did really well, on what Senator Hawley has done on this just in the last three weeks. I'm speaking on the last 21 days here. Senator Hawley visited Jana Elementary in North County, which is currently closed. It's an elementary school closed due to radioactive contamination. He visited and walked Coldwater Creek. He went out to the Weldon Spring site where he visited with many of the folks here today. And then on the Weldon Spring site, he sent a letter three weeks ago urging the Department of Energy to conduct additional testing for radioactive contamination at Weldon Springs after an extensive critique of the DOE's killing up and their monitoring efforts there, very concerning. He also sent a letter to the Department of Energy, to the Chairman of the Energy Committee, Senator Manchin, urging him to hold a Senate hearing in Washington on this very issue. And then after that document drop that was in the third to last slide that Representative showed, 15,000 documents, Senator Hawley sent letters to the Department of Energy, to the Army Corps of Engineers, and to the EPA asking why they have downplayed decades decades and decades of the risks associated with these chemicals. And then in the wake of all of that, Senator Hawley demanded that the federal government pay for and provide compensation and justice for the people of this region. He introduced legislation to do just that. I have it here with me. Legislation that would provide financial compensation to victims who suffered from diseases associated with long-term exposure to radiation. And on Thursday, six days ago, Senator Hawley's legislation was adopted by the U.S. Senate in a strong bipartisan vote. Thank you. Yeah. This, is, this is the first step towards getting justice for this community. I have the legislation here. We have copies. You can also view this on Senator Hawley's website. Uh, it lists the locations and it lists the diseases covered. I have them highlighted here. But I'll close by saying this. Uh, we are here, and could I have the members of Senator Hawley's staff here tonight stand up so you can talk to them afterwards? We've got Andy Dumberth here, we've got Ben Grunder, Madeline, and we've got Alex Lawrence over here. There's five of us here from the Senator's office. We're here to listen to you, and we're here to take your feedback directly back to Senator Hawley because the important part of this legislation is, while it passed the Senate, this is not the final version that will pass. It will be taken up by the House of Representatives in what they call a conference committee, we can make improvements, we can make changes to that legislation, and so please come talk to us. We're here to take notes and accurately convey your concerns directly to Senator Hawley, and he asked that we would be here tonight, and I want to thank the representative for giving us a moment to speak. I know there's people in the crowd that for the first time are going to feel like they've been heard, and if I can have one of my friends from grade school tell a story, it breaks my heart because um, when I found out about the fish, the bush wildlife and the ground contamination, um, I called him back and I said, hey, you, I know you didn't think this applied to you, but it might. And he's got a story that he's going to share and I know it's going to be hard for him, so he might even be angry, but it's not going to be for anyone in this room.
My name is Dwayne Jansen. In 1994, I met my former wife, Amber Jansen. Um, we were married in November of 97. I knew of her cancerous tumor in her spinal cord when I met her. Um, she told me in advance that I may not be a good fit for her, but I loved her. Um, she had surgery in 1992 prior to us meeting. The other 20% was inside the spinal cord. They removed 80% of it. Um, long story short, in 2001, we learned that the tumor had grown back to its original size. We were told chemotherapy uh, most likely would not work, uh, that radiation was a possibility. Um, we opted for that. That seemed like the best option. Um, imagine waking up one Christmas morning and to annoy is that she's fallen off the bed, or fallen, trying to get out of the bed. She couldn't feel her legs. She was paralyzed. Um, unfortunately, she passed away in 2011 at the age of 42. My wife's family, as well as my family, I'm sorry, my wife's family, as well as my family, both fished, uh, fished heavily uh, at the Bush Wildlife Area in the late 70s through uh, roughly 1990. My wife and I looked, we joked many times that we probably crossed each other's paths uh, at a very young age and never knew that one day we would be uh, husband and wife. Um, sorry, I'm shaking. Um, I've actually wondered several times in the past about this uranium and, and so forth and the cleanup. Um, who here remembers WASRAP, the Weldon Springs Site Remedial Action Plan? Um, I remember pretty vividly, I guess I was 12 or 13 years old when this started. All I remember hearing is that there was uh, bad dirt being moved from one area to another. You know, we traveled this area frequently. I remember the big, huge dump trucks carrying stuff. Um, by the way, I asked my dad a couple of weeks ago if we ever fished in Lake 34. I didn't let him know anything about why I was asking. He said that was the best lake out there. And uh, he told me that he figures we probably caught 200 pounds of fish a year out of bush wildlife. Um, I've got a few issues of my own. Once again, could it be tied to this? Can my wife's cancer tumor be tied to this? There's nothing that's ever going to tie it to this. I'm, I'm here because of, I feel that things should have been handled differently. Um, while some people get angry when a loved one is sick or dies, I never felt angry as my wife and I had the best marriage I could ask for. It did hurt bad when she passed, obviously, and it will always hurt. What I think equally hurts me, and does make me angry, is the incompetent interaction between different government agencies regarding this cleanup, the incompetent testing and failure of reporting of the results or the lack of some testing, and the labeling of some, some of these documents regarding the cleanup as secret. I believe people in this county and perhaps around the country are waking up to demanding transparency in the government. It is apparent to me that even as far back as 30 years ago, things were going on behind the backs of American and county citizens, and we were assured that the problem was being taken care of or fixed. I think what we need to discuss tonight and in the near future is how we will progress in a proper cleanup of not only St. Charles County, but St. Louis County's dumping sites. We as Missouri citizens, members of the council, members of the Senate and the House of Representatives needs to fight to have all qualified and responsible documents of the government, both state and federal, testing, reporting to each other. All of these different government agencies need to be talking together, working together, providing current uh, data. I understand some data may be five years old. Uh, what has transpired in the last many years, in my mind, was illegal and deceiving by our government, in my eyes. They should be financially responsible, without an increase to taxpayers, to finally abate the issue of the uranium and other multiple contaminant, uh, contaminants in St. Charles and St. Louis counties. try to let everyone um, have a moment. I, I am appreciative of everyone from North County coming, and I think you guys understand that this might be the first time anyone from Weldon has got to stand up and ask any questions. 
So if there's anybody that's from St. Charles County that wants to say a few things or has some questions, I'll pass the mic around. I don't have anything else to say today. It's more about hearing from you guys. Can we have elected officials or those in their office stand and be recognized tonight? Representative Mark Matisson, I've uh, been involved with the issue since uh, 2016 uh, when I was a resident of Maryland Heights. Uh, and something you see in the news happens to be the constant battle of getting the Radioactive Waste Investigation Fund funded. Uh, I passed that legislation in 2018 trying to force the DNR out into the residential areas surrounding known contamination to do grid-like testing where we live. Now, the DNR themselves fought me every step of the way, but the legislators I worked with did not. We worked together, we got that passed. Now I'm still battling against our governor to get that funded. I need your help on that. I need you to go back to where you came to talk to your legislators as we work to get the yeah. Radioactive Waste Investigation Fund actually funded. Yeah. So that where you live and where you work, when there is valid evidence of potential contamination, our DNR will be forced to go and do that testing. Mm -hmm. What our federal government does not want is actual proof of a problem which is why I keep going after this particular fund and this particular testing. I can't do it alone. I love that I got Trish here working with me. <laughs> when you look at the next uh, round of elections coming up, ask the potential governors if they're willing to put it in their recommended, recommended budget. Anybody here uh, I can run for governor and want to know more about that. <laughs> I'll be talking about it. Thank you. Did you have anybody else that wanted to speak from Wellington? Judge Alessi, would you please tell the story for your name first? Is that too hard to ask? Yes, please. Because I don't understand. I'm still so confused. Like, why is that happening on your side? And I want to investigate. Hi everyone, my name is um, Judge Deborah Alessi, so I'm elected in St. Charles County, thank you very much. I also have stage four lung cancer and basically live my life in two month increments. And I grew up near Coldwater Creek and it fed into the Southern Creek and I played in that creek growing up and I grew up uh, near the airport. And uh, this is, I haven't talked about this in front of a bunch of people before, sorry about this. So I was, I was um, diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. I never smoked. When I was first diagnosed, it was in my bones and my pelvic, my spine, my skull, my liver, my lymph nodes, and obviously both of my lungs. And I was given a couple months to live. I've lasted longer, and this is, thank you. But a year later then, the cancer went to my brain and I had a heart attack and a stroke and was in the hospital. And I have so many doctors and they're like, there's no way she's making it through this one. Um, so I was not supposed to live again, but I was going through chemo. I've gone through radiation and it's scary because I'm constantly having to have brain MRIs and CAT scans every two months. Well, the radiation is going to cause more cancer for me. You know, so, you know, what do I do? So, like I said, I'm battling the lung cancer and I keep going, I keep working. I appreciate all your votes too. While I'm up here, <laughs> I might as well I tell you that. And uh, again, I live in two month increments and I'd love to see something done about this and hopefully stop this for other people, you know, from having to go through this fight. So thank you for listening to me. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Dawn Chapman. This is Karen Nickel. I'm going to come on up. We're the co-founders of Just Moms STL. Everybody out here who can help you is here in this room tonight. They can. I think I'm going to get ready to move my mouth, but it's going to be heartbreaking because the more people that fill this room and the more stories you hear, the more real it becomes. And for those of you that are hearing this for the first time, I'm just sorry. Like Trish said, my heart breaks because there's somebody I know that saw this slideshow and just thought, I played in those creeks. I, I played. So I know what's hitting you. Um, I'm going to pass it to Karen for a comment real quick so she can tell her story. Hi. Um, so I grew up in Colorado Creek. And um, I didn't know about this issue until 2012. Uh, my parents had no idea that they moved their family into an area that was contaminated um, from Colorado Creek flooding up into our neighborhood. Um, where I lived, if you saw Atomic Homefront, the HBO documentary, um, the park that they cleaned up in 2015, um, that is the park that I grew up in, I played in practically every day. Um, that park had radioactive material on the surface in 2015, um, as well as another park and another property in Florissant, the Archdiocese property, that is still contaminated. It still has radioactive waste sitting on the surface today. There are no signs to keep people out of that area. People go in that area. Um, there are no signs on, along the creek still yet today. Um, I do have a lot of autoimmune diseases, and um, I have a five-year-old granddaughter who had a cyst um, in utero, and there was hopeful we were hopeful that it would dissolve and go away. Um, I knew that it wasn't going to, um, just based on the fact that my son is a cold water creek baby and my daughter-in-law is a cold water creek baby, um, and because of where I grew up. Um, it turned into a mass on her ovary and it had to be removed when she was three weeks old. Um, she is fine, um, but the point is, is that that's what we live with every day. Um, the fear of when you know, our kids get sick, um, you know, simple illnesses such as headaches and, and whatnot, it's fear. We're scared. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, Dawn and I read through all 15,000 of those documents. We had them. Um, we knew what you guys were going to read if you read them, when they were released to the media, as Trish said, um, it was crazy. Um, but we knew what was, what was coming. And you guys being here today, learning this information, if it's your first time hearing it, or you knew a little bit about it, um, we need you. Every single one of you in this room, we need you. You. This legislation, this amendment, yes, it passed, but we have a lot of work to do. We need every single one of you 
to reach out to your friends, your family, when the time comes and we know more information, we need you to be on this and watching. If you haven't watched Atomic Homefront, the HBO documentary, find a way to watch it. It's on YouTube. Um, find a way to watch it. Educate yourself. Know what you're dealing with here. Um, if you need more information about Coldwater Creek, Westlake Landfill, um, you can reach out to Don or myself. Our email is westlakemoms at gmail.com. Our Facebook pages are Westlake Landfill and Just Moms STL. You can find the documents on our website at justmomsstl.com. Um, there's several people in this room from North County that have stories. If you guys need to talk, Dawn and I are always here. We have been doing this for almost 11 years now. We get messages every single day about people that have illnesses and, and what do I do. Um, we're here. We're here for you guys just as much as we are for the people in North County. <laughs> the last thing that I would say is support Trish. Support Trish. Look around. You have Richard West. You have Joe, Joe Brazel. We need more state representatives and we need more people supporting Trish because what she's going to need is help to get the leadership in the state of Missouri behind her and behind Senator Hawley. And eventually this is going to go to the House. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to need Congresswoman Ann Wagner's office and Congressman Blaine Luca Meyer. They're going to need your support. So Trish will be giving you guys a call to action. Uh, we started chasing answers. Um, my story was in 2015, um, my kid, who's still alive and healthy, healthy now, um, he was diagnosed with a thymoma as a child, and that's only happened 50 times in medical history. So I knew I had a canary in the coal mine, and well, that's what led to my work to figure out what happened. So um, Once I started hearing other people's stories, um, it's just hard not to take action for others. And she has a story because people walk around and say, well, now that Weldon's been cleaned up, um, there's nothing that happened. But I really just want to point out, I don't think anyone is in the situation they are now because of that hill as they were prior to cleanup. And I think during cleanup might have been really disastrous as well. So that's, that's what I'm focusing on. And I'm also focusing on the current situation, make sure nobody else gets hurt. Thank you. I, I have a lot of anxiety talking in front of people, so if I get kind of <laughs> off that spot, but honestly, um, many, I can go tell you countless stories about my family, uh, many members of my family who have cancers, autoimmune disorders. Um, I'm going to focus on my brother, I um, hope I don't get too emotional, um, and my aunt. So my aunt lives in North County, she uh, is here in Coldwater Creek. She you know, it was up to date on mammograms, everything. Um, and as of January, she had a huge mass. So it came out of nowhere, uh, breast mass. And anyway, um, she actually helped clean up in the floods last summer. So I really believe there's something to that. And that thing grew out of nowhere, like I said. Um, so she's going through treatment currently. So I like everyone keep her in our, in our thoughts. Her name's Carol. And then I'd like to talk about my brother. So I'm a 1985 graduate of Francis Howell. Um, my brother is a 92 graduate, and I have a third brother who is a 97 graduate. So um, we all have been at Francis Howell. I have countless friends who have had thyroid cancers, uh, many different types of thyroid diseases, as well as multiple different types of cancers. Um, I'll tell about myself later, <laughs> focus on my brother. My brother was diagnosed two years ago, almost two years ago, with stage four colon cancer um, at the age of 47. He is going through treatment, um, has, has to really keep chasing <laughs> this disease because it keeps you know, reappearing in other places. Um, so they're really trying to be very aggressive as he has two very young boys that he's still raising. So. Um, lots happening there, but um, I know that definitely this is a reason why we have no family history of cancer in the colon. 
Um, and so therefore he didn't get early screening. Um, and so that's why when it evolved, it was so bad. Um, currently he is waiting, going through a third round of chemo and we'll have another exam here in a couple months. Um, and my fear is that they won't continue treatment. So, um, if we could all keep him in our thoughts, his name is Keith. And then, uh, again, countless friends of his, very young, have had cancer that he went to Powell with. Um, lymphomas, testicular cancers, um, you name it, it's just so many people. Um, so, my story uh, is that right after high school I had a lot of problems with um, just my body in general, things were happening, and my heart was, you know, beating fast, and all kinds of things were happening. Uh, it was my thyroid, so I had, my body was attacking my thyroid, autoimmune thyroid disorder, Hashimoto's. Um, but anyway, not only that, but I also developed a very large pituitary tumor in my head. So, um, I really firmly believe it's related to that as well, all that exposure, um, and I'm just, Gonna give this over to someone else to share their story. I don't want to take everyone's time, so let's go with it. Yeah. Yes. I'm Tom Raylan, and I taught at Francis Howell. And the photo that you showed, where they were looking at the cleanup sites and the moon suits, I probably could have been in that picture. My wife, friends, colleagues were all at that site during the cleanup. And yes, we're looking at what's going on right now. But there's a window, I think, that we need to really truly look at, and that's when they imploded the plant. Because when they did that, that dust, that, that dust was full of radioactive material, uh, thorium, radium, and it was breathed every day by every student at that high school. We had 2,000 kids on that campus, and they were a stone's throw away from moon suits. And so it was, it was a kind of a running joke, but now it gets very serious. I've lost several colleagues to cancer, and I do believe that that window is the one we need to look at. The DOE is very creative in how they hide the truth, and they spread the zip codes out so far and wide that it made the distribution of cancer seem normal. If, and this is for the Holly folks in particular, the DOE needs to look at one sample group, those who taught and went to Francis Holland. Because that is there's no way that is going to show there's no evidence. It is a critical moment. Uh, I took my daughter to go see Oppenheimer uh, just the other day, and there's that scene when the, when the bomb goes off, and they're seeing the light. And then there's a little pause there. And all of a sudden, boom, they get the impact. The, the, that impact of that bomb. That is what's going on now. That is something that we're all feeling the ripples of. The how staff and how students, especially during the demolition of that place, we watched it on a daily basis. We breathe that air in gym class. The football team at every game, they're huffing and puffing radioactive dust. And so there's no way that if we look at that sample group, those who went to Francis Allen, I don't couple of students in the audience too, it's good to see. But I love what I did. But now that I think about where I taught and the impact of where I taught, it, it frightens me because there's one hidden factor involved in this radiation. It can change your DNA. And that DNA can be transferred to your kids. This problem is not going away. The ripple from the bomb will go on for generations. So yes, we're looking at the window right now, and I, I'm happy we're doing that, and I'm shocked that we're seeing movement. Why your particular bill didn't pass the Missouri Senate, I find shocking, but at some point, we have to get in the grill of those senators, who because of, and I'll be very frank here, it is driven by property, or I would say real estate lobbyists, who do not want the property value of this area to be tarnished by the truth. politics, but how a senator couldn't support the bill after listening to the testimony in that room. It was over two hours of the most tear-jerking testimony I've ever seen. It moved everyone in there, and I thought it's a no-brainer. And then it dies. Yeah. 
I, I, it's unconscionable. So the fact that we're seeing federal action, that's positive. But really, what we need to garnish right now is anyone who went to Francis Howell, who feels in any way, shape, or form that they've been affected by this, they need to get that information to the proper authorities. That number will shock anyone who looks at it. And the fact that the DOE and the EPA are delaying answers is <coughs> frightening. How can they not give us answers right now? I apologize in my old age, years are kind of difficult. But I want to say 89 to about 91. I, I, I can have some help. Yeah, that was the year that they imploded. The cleanup was during 97 to 98, correct? That's the dome. That's the dome. What I'm talking about is the destruction of the plant. That plant closed down in 66. And so it sat there from 66 to a till whenever they decided to implode it, why it just sat there. But when they imploded it, that's what kicked in the dust. That's what stirred the whole thing up as far as the air contaminants. As, as far as like, the cleanup zone, when they made the zone, there was dust particles. Oh. We were, I was in class of 1999 at Francis Hall and was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 2019. So I was in the marching band and I remember specifically um, the cleanup the sites, and we were sitting there as nine kids breathing in the air. This is my first time here tonight, and um, I just would like to thank you for all the work that you guys have done, and I just, I'm, I'm really blown away well, right now. You're one voice of now, probably voice several of thousand students who could say that same thing. That window is very important, so we need to get the word out to Francis Howe's students and Francis Howe's staff to share the stories that you have shared. I think it would be overwhelming testimony that that window, in particular, is one of the most impactful radioactive events in the United States. And when they get that data, I would think then we can move forward on <coughs> taking care of some people, as well as at least simply admit that it is an issue. They haven't done that. They are, they are they are just stalling on every step of the way. And so I, I just think that this, this meeting is shocking, the number of people. So get to work. Get, you have the access online. These groups will take that information. Trish, Richard, they'll all take it. And that way we can start compiling it and provide it to the proper authorities to let them know. I truly think if we look at Francis Howe, that will be the clincher. There are many people here who have personal stories of personal illness, um, and it's it's very impactful for many people. I just want to thank you, Tricia. 2018, I was part of a small group, not part, I, I came. There was maybe 15 of us in a small room, and asking these questions, because we were all graduates from Francis Howell, and we were all sick, or had loved ones who were sick. And I just, we could spend countless hours telling our stories. I think I just really want to, sh to thank you and your tenacity and your passion and your energy and connecting with those in North County um, and all that they've done. I'm, I'm, when we left there that first meeting, I would never have guessed that this is where we're at. So I want to thank you, Tricia, for taking this on. And And I think we accomplished that. But the thing that she said that means a lot to me 
She said, no Viking fights alone. <laughs> How many Howard and Blur here did you see him though if he went to Howard and taught it all? <laughs> Do you guys think it's time that we get this fixed? What about the with the zip code? We're not even on the local She has such a good question and large population we're not on the legislature. Right. No floor. Yeah. That, when I told you guys that um, I called the senator, he, what he said was he was like, Trish, I, I mean, Rich, Rich, how bad have we been trying to tell this story? And if it wasn't for you guys being here today, I honestly God didn't know if anybody would show up. I knew the stories would be there. But we've been harmed by PR so bad that I talk to people. I have, there's a, a gal that I just love dearly, and she called me and said she has, she's a 92 graduate with stage four bile duct cancer. And when I asked her if she thinks it could be related to health, she's like, probably not. And then I asked her, well, why, why do you feel that way? And what we, we were trying to dissect that, and I think it might be easier to point a finger on a contractor. You know, like at least in North County, they could at least have a little bit of distance from the country you love because there was a contractor. But here, you have to be brave and you almost feel like you're in isolation saying that it's the federal government that did it. There's nobody else that did this. Oh, the zip codes. Um, we are going to keep talking about that. For all the help people, I brought my notebook. we got to get some more zip codes. I was scrambling when they were trying to get that passed and I was trying to feed them additional zip codes, and it went by so fast. And um, the senator called me personally, and I'm like, you guys, he really is committed, and he said that he's gonna do everything he can to make sure that we get that in there. Right now, 33 years, we can't go another 33 years with nothing, so we're just gonna keep having to kick that door open. Hey Trish, that's why the senator sent his people here. Yeah, he yeah. had to get the bill packed, the amendment when he could, but it's not finished. Right. So we took the option you have, but that's why he sat five or six people here. He wants you to talk to them so he can approve it when it goes to the house. Right. But he didn't want to wait 30 more years. So right. please understand. I, I want to just you acknowledge. No, no, no. I just, I just, oh yeah, we are. This, this is Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft running for governor, and he called me up when he heard about this, and he said, I don't want any attention, but I just want to listen. And I'll tell you what, he had picked up the cell phone. <laughs> he picked up a cell phone and asked me how he could help at least once a week since we were talking. The senator is not trying to leave anybody out. He had a narrow window when he could get it put on the bill, and he took that. But he's got how many? You got five or six people here? He's got five people that are here. They are here to meet with anybody that can help them make that bill better, but he had the opportunity, so reach out to his staff. It's not over. He's gonna, he's, he wants to include you. He's just got to do it within the time frame. So it's not that he's trying to leave everybody out. Talk to his staff. Yes, thank you. And I, I know I have a question over And you guys, at some point, if we get kicked out of here, I'll stay in the parking lot as long as you need me. Well, you're here, Joe. Joe, I want to go ahead and I'm going to touch on that point a little bit because you, in the beginning of this meeting, you, you said you've been a, a council person in this area for 22 years and you didn't even know anything about it. That's how much our state, and I'm going to stress our state, but our local governments as well, have kept this under wraps. We need to start asking them to step forward and start investigating what the heck is going on. Because I'm, I'm telling you, our county government, not necessarily the one that's in power now, but the ones before, 
are complicit in this. They know, but they're not giving us any answers. They say, well, we've done our study, so let's just move on. And that's what we all have done. We've been busy with our kids. We've been busy with our lives. It's catching up to us. We need to start asking the politicians in our county and in our state why they are allowing this to happen. Ask them. Make them answer you. don't make them answer they're just going to keep right on doing the same thing because I asked Joe Joe and I had this conversation he's like I had no clue why why Joe he's like nobody's ever told me anything so we told him and here he sits today trying to help us figure out what's going on I met Trish in 2018 at the meeting you all were talking about and because my dad worked at Francis Hall, my mom and dad lived two miles as the bird flies away from Francis Hall. My, uh, my brother went to Francis Hall, and my other brother is an avid fisherman hiker who spent his whole life and pushed his wildlife trunks and through who knows wherever and whatever month was over there. And, you know, I had questions about what was going on. I've always stood behind Trish in her quest to find out what's going on. But later that year in 2018, my mom, contracted um, what is known as multiple myeloma. And she spent the last years of her life trying to figure out why and how she, she got this because we have zero cancers in our family. And it wasn't shortly before my mom passed that my brother contracted Hashimoto's disease. Well, about two months after my mom passed, everybody's seen the commercials on TV about Camp Lejeune, right? Well, the light finally went off in my head contaminated water. And the, the third thing on that list was multiple myeloma. So I started, I contacted Trish, I started getting involved with this. And you know, what I found out is, my mom owns a business directly across from Golden Elementary School. Her kennel manager died of a rare brain disease. They didn't have cancer in their family. Four of my mom's show dogs died of cancer, but that was like, what the heck is going on over there? My mom passed of multiple myeloma and my brother has Hashimoto's. Their neighbors across the street have cancer. Their neighbors next door have cancer. Guess what, they're all homeless. Let's start putting this together. Why hasn't our government reached out to us? Because you know what? They do test the waters in those wells monthly. And then they compile a list and they send you a little thing with, with 10, 10 pinpoints on there. This is good, this is good, it's 10 things. What were you talking about earlier, Trish? 573. Where's the test for 573 chemicals? There's a lot of people out in St. Charles County. Go and ask your politicians. Go and ask your health department. Why are you not paying attention to what's going on? I'll, I'll tell you, I represent this district. I re represent pretty much everything south of 40, basically, all the way down to Augusta. And I know there's a lot of people here that are not here tonight that have been touched by cancers in this area. I live a, a, a block down the road and I can name five, six families that I know of just right off the top of my head in this small town of 700 people that have been touched just recently with cancers, rare myelomas and cancers like that. Something is going on and we need answers. And I have to give Trish kudos. She's been on top of this. She's done a lot of work. She's, I'm still trying to take in the documents, the, the, the documents upon documents upon documents. There's so much to read. There's so much to see how our government has just pulled the wool over our eyes, and we've all accepted it. I'm not going to accept it anymore. I'm fighting with Trish. I'm a little bit more quieter than she is, but I'm still fighting. I'm going to stand behind her. I believe in everything that we're talking about. But I also want you to know that I have been in government my whole life. I've been a public servant my whole life. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say that our federal government did this on purpose. Because we, as the St. Louis region, and this is a regional issue. This isn't just us. This isn't just North County. This isn't just St. Louis City. This is a regional issue. The, the eastern part of our state has been damaged. You know, there's damage all the way out to Innsbruck that never gets talked about. This region has been damaged. And I don't want to sit here and, and, and go off and say how bad our federal government is and everything else because, yes, they've done some things wrong. 
and, and St. Louis stood up and did their part in the war. Others went out to fight, and St. Louis kind of gave up their people and their land to make sure that we could stay in the United States. So I still respect that. But at the same time, the people of Missouri need to be made whole. We've, we've done our duty, we've done our job to take care of us, take care of our children, take care of our families that have been in touch with us. My mother spent over $500,000 of her money taking care of herself. Now, I don't want that to be paid by the government, but there are some people that can't do that. So, if, if, if we leave here with anything today, I'm going to give this back over to Trish, but if we leave with anything here today, reach out to your state and your local, I'm, I'm going to stress local government. I want answers from my St. Charles County local government why their health department isn't paying attention to this. They could surely put us on lockdown or try to put us on lockdown for COVID, but they can't reach out to a problem that we know is happening. They should be paying attention to this. We pay them to do that. Trish, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Right now, I think we need to take the resources of Senator Holly's office and gather around them after this meeting and try to get as many notes. I'll help take notes with them too and help feed them with what this looks like. Because just like these fellows have said, nobody's really done a proper look at what has been going on in our area. Thank you so much for everything. My name is Susie, and I just wanted to tell you that I cannot tell you how much this means to us that we're probably finally being heard. I, in the 80s, started crying to the Center of Disease Control when my husband was diagnosed with lymphoma. And um, three houses in a row in Wedgwood all had different kinds of cancers. And the CDC told me, well, it has to be a certain kind of cancer in order to make sure that it's a trend. And I fought it, fought it. I'm a health care provider. I'm taking care of a very ill husband who's the longest bone marrow transplant survivor known. And we lived this, but we lived this, but I cried foul when his mom was diagnosed, who lived across the street from the creek. Picture the woods, walk in the creek, go across the woods again, that's Janice land. And his mom was diagnosed with cancer. He has a sister with MS. I watched this start to all unravel. And then our teenager is diagnosed with metastasized thyroid cancer. So we have three generations. And my voice was not heard until this one and these guys started coming forward because you couldn't get anywhere. Now we're going to be heard. But I have to watch. It's not the word. It's the quality of life that I've had to witness with my husband who's dying of heart and lung disease now, and not a smoker, but he's been through chemo and everything, and a son who has to be kept in a very hyperthyroid state. So he's great diet, got doctors at Barnes, has had five major surgeries, and this is his life in his 40s. So it's the quality of life and what we want to protect with all of our people. And like Trish said, the, word, the stories have to come out because up until 20 years ago, we did not have electronic medical records. Yes, your doctor might have wrote it in a chart that goes in a file, but those are not public knowledge. Mortality rates are death certificates. So if they're going by that, then it's a cheat. And we also have to be careful with COVID because people that died of COVID, they didn't make the diagnosis secondary to other diagnoses that they had first. So I thank you so much, Tricia, for being there for us and for being an example setter and being here. Schrader. I'm 88 years old. I was raised about a quarter of a mile from Westlake Quarry, which is in the news about every three months. 75, 76 years ago, they dumped the waste. It's still there. And do not believe the core engineers or the EPA is going to service you. You mentioned why are they not? Because we need to be on their ass every day. We do, you do, I do. Otherwise, they'll 
other urgencies coming up tomorrow and the next day. They will burp you and we will ask you here until it's in the paper again. Everybody needs committed and get on the politicians. They can't do it by themselves. They need to support, like we said, not only New Melody, or following all of St. Charles County. So thank you for being here. and things like that. Um, I know that I contacted every news source I could uh, in St. Louis, and I know a lot of other people did as well, and none of them were here. And well, they weren't here at this uh, Who was that? Um, there was like six or seven different channels. Good, okay. Because that's one thing that we hear all the time is if it was really that bad, we'd be hearing about it in the news every day. Uh, I've been in the news every day, so. Uh, <laughs> They, they have been on this story. I just wanted to ask Councilman Bradwell a question. Yeah. Okay. Councilman, would it help, sorry. Would it help you if we came to a county council meeting to speak and support you? Yeah, would that help you? I would ask questions. I would ask a lot of questions. Um, Could you tell I, us when the next meeting is? The um, it's August 14th, 7 o'clock. And I wrote a letter in 19, 2019 on this very same question about the okay. deaths on Highway F. Now, we talk about the public water industry too being next to the wells, but I would suggest that maybe the wells are contaminated as well from the, uh, we have losing streams in our, in our county, and you pump the water out of the ground on the wells. A lot of the people out there are the wells, down in my area, down in the southwest Augusta, and stuff like that. And there are people dying in their own wells too, and so it's not just a public water district too. And are they testing the wells? Of course not, because they're personal property. They're not testing the wells. Okay, and so that would help you if we came. I mean, there is help. Yeah, everybody yeah. who's involved. I mean, the lot of you scream, you grease a wheel, you know, if it's squeaking. And, and yeah, I, I, I'm just kind of shocked at some of the stuff that she's told me about, like these. Ponds or these lakes out of bush, do they have signs out there? Does anybody know? No. Did you know that, Tim? Tim Baker's another councilman. He's older. I didn't know that. I mean, hey, Tim, thanks for coming. Is it our Department of Health? Are they doing anything in our Okay, community? I'll tell you about that. That was one of the latest stories. So um, I, I think I brushed over 2021. Um, DNR asked um, some questions. The DOE basically dismissed them. DNR doesn't legislatively have power to ring the bell. That bothers me. Um, and then I ran across um, some, some old fish study, and I put it out there. Well, the guy from the Post-Dispatch, um, Jack, called and said, you're not going to believe what I just uncovered. What was that? And um, he called DHSS, and they're here. They're here to listen. I'm not throwing stones at them. Um, but it turns out not only did DNR not get answered by the Department of Energy, but neither did DHSS. They have a fish advisory list. They've been asking since 2016 for data on the fish and bush wildlife because there's uranium in those lakes. In our last review, it's actually go increasing. And they asked them if it was on the advisory and they said no because we don't have any data of contamination. So they're not on the list, but it's because they're not responding to them. Um, so I put on my Facebook page, I'm Trish Burns, state representative, but I also have Chasing Answers. Uh, did well in spring, make us sick. You can probably find that article there. Um, we really got to get, I said, but at some point the governor's got to have a round table, right? And say, all right, I need to hear immediately what state agency has been asking for very important environmental and health data. And if they aren't responding to your questions, we need to know right now, right? I don't, I don't think that Jack and uh, Post Dispatch and Trish Burns should just keep uncovering that our Missouri departments are not being heard. So I, I, I've got a pretty simple question that I think is kind of the, the elephant, it's one of the elephants in the room. And um, first of all, I really appreciate what everybody's doing here. You need a, uh, a coalition. I see this Missouri Coalition for the Environment shirt in front of me, and you guys need a t-shirt. And so, <laughs> Um, I'm from Lake St. Louis, and we are all downstream, and I watch it come floating by my house every day, and so we're on public water sewer disperse PWSD2, and so I heard a little bit of your interview on KMOX that got me interested in coming out here, and the thing that tripped me 
And I think probably a lot of other people are wondering right now is when I go home, I'm going to be drinking water out of my faucet. Should I not be doing that? And then, you know, you're talking about 500 plus contaminants plus the potential for radiation. I don't know if these contaminants are radioactive contaminants or separate. They're probably a, a mixture. Is there any water filtration system that can make our drinking water uh, safe enough uh, or not? Or do we just all go start buying bottled water? Because from what I'm hearing tonight, my wife just got diagnosed. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just, we need to know. Do I need to go buy a reverse osmosis? <laughs> I haven't even bought one for myself, but I have heard reverse osmosis helps. Um, I talk about people getting kind of PR, right? But I'm still kind of PR too, because I'm telling you guys, I, I am uncomfortable with our groundwater wells um, being surrounded by a slough that was contaminated, by a quarry that was contaminated. Yet I'll probably go home and drink tap water, so I probably should investigate where I'm thinking there. But my problem is, is I think we need those questions answered immediately. So um, reverse osmosis, I don't have one. I know that I should get one. I now wish I would have got one before I announced this. <laughs> um, I, I don't know anything about it, so I'm not, I can't tell you who particularly. Um, but I know what it feels like to want to try to do something. And I think we need to figure out what to do about the water and just to make sure we check those boxes. We don't want anyone else getting upset. When you started, is if you guys want to just each elect official, just stand up and say your name. Don't, don't, is that, is that okay? yeah. Just stand up and say your name. Just go down the line. And just say your name because we don't have time for that. But uh, I want everyone to know who's here, so that's who you're going to contact. And yes, so you, and, okay. and then um, I give my number out all the time. Um, my cell phone is 314 397 4037. I give that out. You can text me. It's only been a voicemail. Never see it. Thank you, Trish. I'm Nick Schroer, State Senator for St. Charles County District 2. Will Scharf, I'm a candidate for Missouri Attorney General. Jay Ashcroft, I already talked, so somebody else will. <laughs> Walker, I'm the senator of Eric. Um, we even had people from Southeast Missouri, they might have had to head back home, so they gave them a shout out. Um, we also where have some school board members. Okay. Uh, um, Mayor. Do you have a question or are you elected official? Okay, I'll be right back. Elected official. Randy Cook, Randy, raise your hand. Francis Hunt, right there. Francis Hunt School Board. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm on the Francis Hunt School Board for the past year and a half. I've been sitting here trying to think of what somebody like myself could do. Uh, the best thing I can think is uh, spend my time going through old file cabinets of any documentation that we might have gotten as a school district. In 2018, um, I Sunshine, Francis Howell, they, they said it's really hard for them to do that kind of data, maybe you can change it. But one of the things, um, after they did the cleanup, they ripped out most of the buildings in Francis Howell. We can't even go back and test those at this point if we wanted to. Sports. We were in the same conference as Francis House, so there was lots of sports 
activities at, at that area. A lot of my family is from North County. A lot of family has passed. Um, so a lot of stories. So um, I don't know how I could help. I just know that this affects me too. And Manny Macias, Board of Aldermen in Winsfield. I feel like we should just get all the water tested in our, for those 500 contaminants. We should demand that our water gets tested. As we're walking around talking, we didn't really even know what to expect today. And I think uh, those of us that are working on this and the elected officials that are here, um, I think we should probably kind of do a little huddle on how to do um, maybe some kind of action so that we can reach back out to people. So connect with any of us too so we can figure out how to tell you exactly who to contact. Well, um, one more, Trish, one other point is we're, we're not going to get into the growth situation, but why it's important to this meeting is because here we're talking about water contamination, infrastructure issues, and ground contamination. And they're trying to break the three and five acre zoning out here, which is a rural area, and cram all these houses in here. So you got to wonder: is it is, are they holding back on this contamination because they don't want the property guys to go down and want to overdevelop it? It could be a talking point. I don't know. But that's what me and Rich was talking about quite a few times. So let's think about some of those things. Hi, I'm, I'm Tim Baker. I'm a county councilman, just like Joe. I I really appreciate Joe inviting me to this. Uh, not only did I, in my, do I live in Walton Spring, I grew up in North County, played in Coldwater Creek, I also went to Janet Elementary. So this is kind of concerning to me on three different levels. So I appreciate everyone being here, and I appreciate Joe and Richard and Trisha doing everything they can to get the word out, including myself. Thank you. Yeah. Jordan Fears of the Office of Congresswoman Ann Wagner. Thank you. Jennifer Hoskins with Congressman Luke Tamar's office. Alex Lawrence, I'm with uh, Senator Josh Hawley's office. I miss anybody. I know um, we have Deputy Maddie Green here with the AG's office. Um, okay, I know there was another question. Oh gosh, how do I miss my buddy, <laughs> Mary Nick? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's probably busy wishing people I haven't heard that. No, I know, he's, he's always here to listen. I'm Mary Nick Achoni from City of Woodsville, Missouri. And, uh, I got a dollar with Trish before she was elected. She came to me as mayor and had a problem, uh, concern with her water, and we dug into documentation to provide her with the information to prove that her water was safe, and she still had questions. So we dug a little bit deeper. Then she ran for alderman. My life has never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we, we, uh, she, she was confident at that point that her water was safe, but she still has questions. And we still talk. And we're still looking in to make sure that our county and anything I can do as mayor to make sure our water's safe, I'm on board with um, as well. Trisha's been providing a lot of information, so I appreciate it. We've done it. So you said, what is the government offering in this amendment? Um, Sam, could you talk about the, the amendment? I yeah. cut you off guard. Thank you. We've got copies of the amendment. You can also see what passed the U.S. Senate on Senator Hawley's website at hawley.senate.gov. Uh, we're happy to share that. Uh, essentially, what this legislation is, is you receive compensation uh, you know, if you're in a list of zip codes. And so we're here to listen to you and to solicit your feedback. As I said earlier, this legislation is not in the final draft. It'll go back one more time uh, as we make compromises with the House and the Senate. And then if it's passed, it'll go to President Biden, who will uh, hopefully sign it. And then uh, the money is paid out through the United States Attorney General. So. Uh, we'd love to talk with you more afterwards. Uh, we're happy to take your notes. If my folks can stand up one more time with Senator Hawley's office, Andy, Ben, Madeline, and Alex are all with the office. We'd love to talk with you more and learn where you live and what uh, what, your, what trouble you're facing. Thank you, Representative. Um, I 
I want to have them look at something. It, it's not enough. I'll tell you right up. It's not enough. It's like 25000 There was something for 150 I don't know what that goes to. And then there's some medical monitoring and health care. And I know that that is not enough. Everybody knows that's not enough. But it was our only path to get something. Because the one piece that is most important to me, and I, when I tell people the story about my, my kid, obviously doing this, I've met a lot of people who have passed. And a lot of them find out that they have something very rare at stage four. And by a complete fluke and act of God, we discovered my son's cancer um, randomly um, at stage one. And he wouldn't have made it through high school if we randomly didn't discover that. So health monitoring is really big because I just feel like everyone should at least find out at stage one and not stage four. Some days 
I just break down just like it was yesterday. So I can only imagine what everybody else is going through. Sorry. Sorry. So um, I, <clears throat> I moved here in 19... Uh, uh, in 96, thank you, it's my daughter. She went to Francis Howe with my other three daughters. And, uh, and so in 96, we moved into uh, Weldon Springs, uh, real close to the kennel that, uh, that Tim, is it Tim? Rich, I'm sorry. Rich, that Rich talked about. We lived like right around, the, right, right around the block from the kennel. But we lived there for about 20 years, and I saw red water come through the dark creek as I tried to reroute the water from flooding my backyard. Um, it was kind of bizarre, but uh, you know, you kind of go, what's going on, right? And uh, anyway, long story short, I moved to Augusta, and my wife passed away last year after a six month battle with uh, appendiceal cancer, which came out of nowhere, right? Uh, we also worked directly on the bench you were on at the airport. Yeah, so. So I guess what I want to try to figure out is like, so like, how do you record who's eligible for like helping, like what kind of cancers? Like we ought to be creating a list of these things. Like, like you know, I can't bring my wife back, right? But how do we help others that are dealing with this or that, you know, they have a voice when they're faced with this problem? And then, you know, for my three girls that went to Francis Health, you know, what can they do for their future, right? Also, for the Francis Health board members, I just want to make a comment back in like 2018 when your first Chasing Answers meetings I attended, and you showed documentation that the EPA did a report in 2008 and provided that to the um, school staff principals and said, please stop having your gym classes hike the rock mount. Yes. And the principal denied that, according to your paperwork that you showed. And if you drive by, those kids are still hiking that rock mountain. Yep. Rock mountain gets my nerves. I can tell people it's at 4.5 stars on Google for being a fun place to hang out. We should not, I, I feel we should not, that should be easy. Stop taking kids for field trips there. Have you ever gotten trips there? Honestly, I think that they were just as taken advantage of as the rest of us. I, know, but, I mean, you have people in the 80s and 90s, they're cleaning this stuff up, they're wearing the moon suits, and nobody from well, the house. Tom, well, Tom Whalen was here, and no, the principal that. just passed. Those teachers and those principals I'm tried their damnedest to get a move. I'm talking about the people in charge. They knew that, obviously, we shouldn't have been going to school there. What, what I'm telling you is they asked the federal government, they were having meetings, parents were begging, there was almost a fist fight that broke out, trying to get the kids moved. Well, why would they build the school right where no. Ah, see, that's what happens every single time. They did not build how next to a bomb plant. No, I mean, the new renovations. I went to 2007. They just rebuilt. You know what, that, that, that's a good question. What I think is really kind of scary. Uh, we should find out who paid for that. And um, it, we should just ask more questions because I'd really like to know how we did a cleanup and then immediately tear out all the buildings and the land there. Like all the evidence of any. Yeah, like all the evidence is gone. I, I agree with you. Uh, I went to Francis Hall. I was born in St. Charles County. I was at the high school from 73 to 78 because they only had one middle school at the time and only had one grade. So I spent a lot of years there, and I have lost a lot of friends. But the only reason I'm up here tonight is to say something. I have not repeated this story, except for one gentleman here, for over 40 years. Over 40 years ago, I was told this story. And I tried to tell many people that would listen about it, and nobody wanted to hear. So tonight, I want to tell this to all of you. This is not myself. Now, this was a very close friend of mine. She graduated two years after me. Somewhere in the early 80s, when this all started, uh, they had some department, I don't know if it was DOE, who 
come in and do a survey of the high school. At the time, the school still had the original wooden buildings that were there from the Army. They had a lot of classrooms in them. My band room was in there. I spent almost every waking day in that band room. Sometime around 80, 81 was when this happened, when they come in and inspected the school test and everything. My friend came in three weeks later to the grocery store I worked at and told me, hey, did you hear what happened to Fred? I said, no. I said, no, what are you talking about? Three unmarked white moving vans showed up at the school. People got up with drums and full moon suits, not paper suits. I've been talking the full setup. Went into what at that time was called the girls' gym. It was the old original gym. When they left and the kids went back in, the curtains were gone on the stage. So things have been found out as far back as 80. And again, like they have stated, it's just been swept over. So yeah, it's been a problem for a long time. Right. I I have to agree. <laughs> I had cousins that were there 10 and 15 years before me. I have to agree. I suspect they were kept out of the loop too. Now, of course, that's just an opinion. I can't prove any of that. But from the contacts I've had over the years, I've had a lot of contacts with people in various situations, and never one of them has said anything about them how we're being responsible for anything, it's usually they've been kept out too. Again, I have no Hi, my name is Harry Schramm. I graduated from Francis Hall, 67. Well, many things I could say, but back then, the science class Mr. T, Mr. T, I think I remember them. That ring bells? Yeah. Our science teacher and our class actually went over into the uranium facility and walked around inside there. And who do you think it was those dosimeters I'm worried about? Those could have been light about. But actually walk around inside and walk up and touch the yellow cake uranium. Recycled uranium. <laughs> He now has a lot of immune disease called ankylos and spondylitis. It's a really weird, really rare form of arthritis. His head is, his spine is fused from his head to his hips. He's had his hips replaced three times each. His ribs are fused. I have to put on his shoes and socks every day. He cannot go get his feet. And can you answer? I, I'm shocked by that story, but not caught completely off guard. Yes, one of the things that I brushed over is there was a newspaper article, and it said the last day to tour the Kevin O'Cole plant is um, Saturday before the Department of Energy comes in and tears it down. Um, that's one of the articles that I have. My husband went to Francis Howell. He died of uh, colon cancer, and he graduated in 1965. And he told me about stories about them taking all the kids to the uranium plant for field trips. And he talked about the yellow dust dust. My, my brother even says when he got out of school, because he's class of I guess, 97 or 5, I don't know, um, they had to dust off their windshields. My brother class 95. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs>
I have a few concerns. Um, I think they should test the water at Francis Hall more thoroughly right now. Um, yeah. And talking to Richard before, um, me and him grew up next to each other. Um, I lost my sister. But um, I, I told Trish about a story when I was in, um, in Francis Hall about a friend of mine had broken into Mount Pride and the I'm not sure which, who they were, but it was either the um, DOE or the FBI. It was a three-letter agency. They came and they they came into our um, our our study hall with Geiger counters, and they went straight to my buddy and hauled him out because he had broken in to Mount Crop. Um, so we know it was still hot. At, at least in 80 or 81. So I don't, I think we should definitely, I don't want to take away from what the teacher said because I believe it was stirred back up. But even the water, uh, one thing that concerns me about Highway F people, um, I remember going to uh, Defiance to my sister's house and the Femio Sage Creek was flooding and there were guys in white suits down there. They, they were down there cleaning it up. I, I, they were had spotlights in the middle of the night. You know, I mean, this was no, we knew all this stuff, you know, because we were there. I, I, I lived right there. And so I, I'm just saying, to me, the, the main concern should be the study for the, the kids that are currently going there, in-depth study. And this is all tied together. The DOE book that, that I gave, um, yeah. They knew, the, the Department of Energy knows all this stuff because they got a big, a big plan. It was called the Remedial... Um, remedial Action Plan. Yeah, Remedial Action Plan. I'm sorry, I can't it. But I just wanted to say, I think that the first step should be test the water more. Test it better. Test it for the 570 chemicals that are yeah, and I'm still trying to find out. Um, DNR is um, looking to see if Garden Creek and Femio Sage, if they have what data they have, how far back and how current. Um, nobody that I know of. That's why I'm so What I cannot find, I cannot find anyone to give me um, water information about Garden Creek. That's why I was so furious that this is 20 years later. Let me come. I, I, we could do some samples. If, when I reached out to my Wentzville gal, she's really engaged with the city of Wentzville. She said, give me all of the contaminants you can find, and I've been working on that. So I, just a few weeks ago, I ran across that Department of Labor. I don't know if you test for 20, does it cover 500? You know, I don't, I don't know. These are all the questions. I mean, I think we could almost do, let's write up a list of really good questions for now, because I think we all want to check the box for the kids now. Yeah, like an independent or an EPA. <coughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because these creeks go way too far through St. Charles County. Is on the list, and the zip code in Hazelwood is on the list. 
We have to come together. We need North County and St. Charles County to come together. They cannot ignore all of us. I don't know anything. My whole thing has been try to focus on not doing any more damage, but the damage I feel like we're identifying was before cleanup. So I kind of do the whole let's do our due diligence, but we really have to fix a problem before cleanup. And yeah, that's what somebody, he's saying that the reverse osmosis won't take radioactive material. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that. No one to do my due diligence. Um, did we want to wrap this up so that people can break out into sessions? Can I just offer one? If I have one more person, then we'll, we'll wrap this up. I'm from Coldwater Creek, North County. And all I can tell you is that you cannot trust the Army Corps of Engineers. They will lie to you and keep everything and tell you it's all private information. We can't tell you what's in the Where I grew up, Right there in Coldwater Creek, and I believe that's Sue Gaffney over there, who was talking about her husband. Oh, hold on, you guys. But this is our last person. Hold on. I know her, but I grew up right there in that same area. Wedgwood was built around my family's home. We played in those creeks. I lost my parents at a young age. My one sister died of a great tumor that should never have been anything but benign, but it acted as if it was uh, malignant. Very common, but the CDC did their study and they said, oh, yeah, nothing, really nothing, very minimal of anything that's affected you or anybody else. My son's a two time cancer survivor. And the only thing I'm mad about with regard to COVID is my son's not touching because he was diagnosed at age two. I think I that's something that we should look at. I'm going to let Joe wrap it up. Um, what I'm thinking is up here, can we have those from our federal offices come up here so that people want to talk to them, uh, they know where to find them, and I'm going to let Joe say some parting words. Thank you all for coming. The New Melly um, Club is, uh, Community Club is nice enough to lend this to us till 8.30, and they want to, uh, maybe we could have some help with the chairs. Yeah, and then thank you all, you guys, this was really impressive. Uh, me and Richard will, and for those who were here about the girls, we'll have another one of these come up or so to talk about some players. Um, so thank you all so much.